Welcome, I'm Nina Griffin, and this is the Astrology and Magic channel. Today we'll talk about the astrology of April 2022. First off, I wanted to say thank you to all of my patrons. If you would like to get access to Astrology and Magic videos early, as well as access to Astrology and Magic videos that are never released to the public, you can join my Patreon at patreon.com slash Nina Griffin. You can also get access to my Magical Elections document that comes out once a month that shows you how and when to make planetary talismans to achieve your goals. All right, now let's get started. So April is one of the most action-packed months of 2022. I won't lie, it's a very dramatic month astrologically, and usually mundane events and events in our lives tend to follow. It's a little hard to believe, given that everything that has already happened this year has been pretty dramatic, but this is a month when we have one of the toughest aspects, which is the conjunction of Mars and Saturn, and one of the best, Venus conjoining Jupiter in Pisces. So there is a sense with this month of a powerful seesaw effect, kind of very extreme, where the early part of the month is marked by this hard aspect of Mars and Saturn, but the last part of the month will have an unexpected and dramatic opportunity for grace and growth, perhaps as a direct result of the hardship that we experienced early on in the month. I think that the turning point of the month could come in the middle, of the month from that Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces. It's a highly idealistic and compassionate combination that gives us a chance to believe in something better. And you have to believe things can get better in order to make positive changes. That positive mindset has to be there. And I think Jupiter conjoining Neptune can help provide that, assuming that we can use that for concrete changes rather than just hoping for something that will never happen. Now, the first week of the month is going to be very busy. It starts off with a bang. Mercury will conjoin the sun at 13 Aries on April 2nd. So this is a new Mercury cycle. It's a superior conjunction because Mercury is direct. And Mercury will become occidental right after this conjunction rising behind the sun. So it's a very purposeful and fiery Mercury in Aries, but his influence is more hidden due to his occidental placement. So we could see discussions and commerce, they're happening in, happening in a warlike context, right, in Aries. So there could be, for example, hidden arms trading or secret negotiations in the middle of conflict. More information or consequences may emerge around April 10th, so about a week later, as Mercury leaves the sun's beams and becomes apparent. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Now, in a couple of days after that, April 4th, is that much-feared Mars-Saturn conjunction at 22 Aquarius. It's a very difficult configuration. I won't try to sugarcoat it. It's one that occurs every two years. And in the past, this conjunction in Aquarius has brought air disasters, as you would expect, since Aquarius is an air sign. We've already seen a number of U.S. military plane crashes and helicopter crashes, including a helicopter crash here in LA a couple of weeks ago, also the terrible fate of the China Eastern Airlines flight. Also, and I can't omit this, because of Aquarius's rulership of Russia and generally of the former Soviet republics, including Ukraine, frankly, I expect ugliness and evil on a grand scale in Russia's war on Ukraine around this time. The irony, of course, is that the same sign governs both nations. So, and maybe Russia's starting to get this, I don't know, but because they're governed by the same sign, anything visited on Ukraine impacts Russia just as much, maybe in a slightly different way. Now, the very next day, April 5th, Venus enters Pisces, and Venus is dramatically strengthened by this transition from Aquarius, where she has just some minor dignities, to her exaltation in Pisces. This placement brings beauty and compassion and frequently the elevation of a female figure to an important or public position. Exaltation has that special meaning of public acclaim. So it often means some kind of public elevation of a female figure. On a personal level, Venus's transit brings the opportunity for elevated Venusian pursuits in our own lives like art, spirituality, especially spirituality that involves you know, feminine deities, as well as romance. Now, April 10th, we get Mercury's evening rise at 29 Aries. And this is essentially uh, what I was talking about with that Mercury-Sun conjunction. This is where Mercury becomes apparent to the eye. He becomes visible, he emerges out of the sun's rays, and it's a moment that was historically known as phases or an appearance in ancient Greek. 
So it's a moment of great potency for a planet. It's kind of like the curtain rises. You can now see the performer in all his glory. And so those hidden discussions or war trade or whatever was going on under the conjunction of Mercury and the Sun now becomes public, or at least the consequences do. So it's interesting often to look at what happens around the time of phases and then look back at what was going on during the conjunction to the extent we ever find out. The very same day, April 10th, Mercury enters Taurus. Attention now shifts from war negotiations to negotiations regarding material things and all the things that money can buy, which includes things like land and territory and real estate, buildings, right? Such as, as well as movable goods to some extent. Certainly money can be one of those things. So suddenly the discussion is much less about pure military placements and military activities and much more about Taurian things, which are tangible, and to some extent Venusian things as well, since Venus is the ruler of Taurus. Now the second full week of April, April 12th, we get another major aspect, which is Jupiter conjoining Neptune very close to 24 Pisces. I believe it's 2359. This is an aspect that defines, I think, the spring of 2022. It's an optimistic kind of people power combination that seeks to emphasize humanistic values and compassion. It's, I think it's the astrological signature of the compassion and generosity that's been shown to Ukrainian refugees throughout the world, certainly in all of Europe, that's basically had to deal with almost 4 million people fleeing the country in just the space of a month. I think that this is going to be a positive for the stocks in general, because obviously this combination brings optimism, happiness, you know, it may or may not be lasting. There have to be other influences that tell us whether this will last. However, it certainly has a sense of, you know, pie in the sky, happiness, optimism. And I think it's important, especially when times are difficult. April 14th, Mars will exit Aquarius, finally, and enter Pisces. One hopes that this takes Russia's war on Ukraine down a notch. Mars represents aggression, and his passage through Aquarius has kept the conflict in Ukraine going very strong. The downside of Mars in Pisces is that the earthquake and tsunami potential of 2022 could be activated now as it approaches Jupiter and Neptune. That is an earthquake combination that I discussed in greater detail in my Aries Ingress videos, which you should watch if you haven't seen them yet. And of course, Mars passing over those positions, particularly getting close to Neptune, is going to activate that potential. Now, April 16th, we'll have a full moon at 26 Libra. This is a surprisingly nice full moon, especially coming after the drama of early April. 26 Libra is very close to the fixed star Spica, who's at 24 degrees and change of Libra. And this is a fixed star that is very, very good for humanity. It, it sustains life. It rules things like food, it rules things like agriculture and medicine, all the things that are needed for humans to survive in a hostile environment. What's lovely about this full moon is that it's not aspected by the malefics, by the traditional malefics, Mars and Saturn. Uh, it's not making a hard aspect. There is a trine from the moon to Saturn, but that's okay. And it's also ruled by Venus, who is herself a benefic planet, and she is in Pisces, which is wonderful. Now, she's not quite conjunct Jupiter yet. They are out of orb as of the time of the full moon, but it's, it's quite a lovely full moon. And I think that together with Jupiter conjoining Neptune earlier that week, this full moon helps change the conversation into something very positive and affirming, uh, quite a bit of a contrast from what we've seen the last couple of weeks and months. Now, the next day, April 17th, Mercury at 13 degrees Taurus will conjoin Uranus and sextile Venus at 13 Pisces. It's almost simultaneous. This suggests some kind of dramatic compromise that's going to be available regarding those tangible things I mentioned symbolized by Mercury and Taurus. You know, Venus brings harmony and Mercury offers a negotiated position. So this could be an opportunity to have sort of a perhaps unexpected breakthrough in your negotiations when it comes to material things like compensation, like land, again, the things that are needed to survive. Now, the third full week of April, April 18th, Mars will transit the midheaven of the Aries Ingress horoscope that's set for Washington, DC. You can watch that video separately. This is a US specific transit, so it's probably not going to be applicable other places. 
and could indicate the United States uh, taking a warlike stance. There could be some kind of unusual conflict or violence that's noteworthy. It could be uh, aggression or separation involving the government or a public person. All of these are 10th house things. We could also see an intense weather event that impacts the United States, or at least is dramatic enough to be noted across the country. Now, the same day, April 18th, the Sun will square Pluto at 28 Aries in Capricorn. And this combination is sort of like the archetypal conflict between the gods and the demons, between high ideals and the material nature. It's not even so much the conflict of good and evil, but rather two very different worldviews that collide and manifest as power games. This could time a COVID resurgence in places that have had low cases up till now, as Pluto in Capricorn is a key planet in prolonging and reactivating the pandemic over and over. The very next day, April 19th, the Sun will enter Taurus. The Sun moves out of his exaltation in Aries into a less warlike stance. The Sun in Taurus is full of life, and it's much more interested in romance than in war, so we now have an opportunity to create meaningful relationships as well as beauty, rather than struggling for dominance. So the tenor changes quite a bit around April 19th as well. Now, April 23rd, Mercury will conjoin the North Node at 22 degrees Taurus. Mercury enters the world of illusion now. You know, the North Node is a maximizer, right? It's a, it's a node that increases things, traditionally speaking, but it also represents the illusory nature of material reality, which is more of a Vedic astrology concept. Mercury, of course, represents commerce and communication, and these can feel very attractive and compelling now, but our goal here is to resist the narrative that we have to participate, right? We are being drawn in. There's only one way to think. You know, it's almost a very regimented way of thinking here, but to the contrary, we have to see the game for what it is. It's a game of shadows and illusion. So it's important to maintain some emotional and mental distance from the narrative with which we are being presented. The next day, April 24th, Mercury at 23 Taurus will square Saturn in Aquarius. And we can see this as linked to the Mercury conjunction with the North Node. The facts are very hard now. They're very demanding, right? Saturn is involved. But the danger now is that we forget that at a higher level, it's all a cosmic game. Things may seem very serious, but in reality, it's important to take a step back and realize that everything changes, everything is temporary, and above all, nothing is as it seems. Now, the fourth full week of April, April 29th, Pluto will station retrograde at 28 Capricorn. This is a collective transit rather than a personal one, and it could again show a return of COVID in some locations where cases have been low. I mean, there could be a sense of, okay, we're doing that again. April 29th, Mercury will enter Gemini, and Mercury here is in his own sign. He takes on the guise of information, teaching, and business. Mercury's transit through Gemini is generally helpful to mercurial types of efforts, like starting a course of study or working on a project involving communication or writing. The very next day, April 30th, solar eclipse at 10 degrees Taurus is here. This solar eclipse is remarkable in a number of ways. It's ruled by Venus in a partial conjunction with Jupiter in Pisces, and it's rare enough that the ruler of an eclipse is an exalted benefic, and it's rarer still that that exalted benefic conjoins the other benefic in its domicile. So this eclipse brings the opportunity for a positive breakthrough of some kind, political or scientific. Eclipses primarily bring drama, and the effects are not always permanent, but they do always get our attention. I will be discussing the eclipse in more detail in another video. It is fascinating to know that Poland, Iran, and part of Russia were traditionally ruled by Taurus. All of these countries have been in the news recently, so I wonder if this eclipse brings an opportunity for any and all of them for a climb down from their warlike stance. On the weather side, I could very much see this particular combination lead to flooding and rain, even though it's well into spring, and we could also see some of that earthquake potential activated as well. The very same day, Venus conjoins Jupiter, perfects that conjunction at 27 Pisces. So this is a very special conjunction that only comes around every 12 years. Both benefics are dignified in Pisces, so it's extra special. 
The fact that it's happening near an eclipse emphasizes the potentially dramatic impact of the conjunction. And we will have been feeling it for about a week now, about a week before the actual perfection date, and for a few more days afterwards. So I think there's an opportunity to make deals, to harmonize, and for people individually and collectively to access the better and more compassionate angels of their nature. Overall, as I said, this is going to be a dramatic month with a lot of ups and downs. Generally, the trajectory seems to be from difficult to much more positive. However, again, a dramatic month astrologically often means drama here on Earth. So it's important to take a slightly detached view and just recognize it as a game of illusion and shadows that it is. If you haven't yet seen my whole year 22 forecast video, you can watch it on YouTube. You can also watch the Aries ingress videos that I mentioned to help fill in some of the gaps of what I discussed today. And of course, you can always subscribe to the Nina Griffin channel on YouTube. All right, thanks for watching.